Dearly beloved, praise the Lord again, and we thank God for this time. In these episodes of Finding God, we have been at it and shall continue being at it, because that is what God created us for, to find him, because he first loved us. And that is at the center of our message, that we seek to find God because he first loved us. And so we shall continue with our episodes the personalities in the Bible, because there are men and women that tried to find God during their generations. And so we pick lessons from these men and women so that we are able to find God during our generation. We have looked at Abraham, Abraham the man, the friend of God. And now this time we look at the man called Noah. Noah, the man that lived uh, during his generation as well. We should have started with Noah, but this is the arrangement that actually Noah lived at a time when there was a lot of wickedness. And this is got in the Bible and the Bible chapters that we read about the man Noah are Genesis chapter six, chapter seven, chapter eight, and chapter nine. There are four full chapters that, that talk about the man Noah. And Noah was a man that lived his ground during the time of wickedness in the Bible. And so we find him, and the Bible does mention about him that Noah did all that the Lord God commanded him. He did what God commanded him, and Noah and his son's wives entered the ark. Why did they enter the ark? Because they did what God commanded them. I have already mentioned that Noah lived during a generation that was wicked. And that wickedness, we get it in Genesis chapter 6, when God got angry, when God got, I mean, annoyed with what he saw. And in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, the Bible says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth. And that every inclination of thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. And so the Bible does mention about the wickedness, the inclinations of the heart, evil all the time. But the man Noah found favor in the eyes of God because he did what God desired him to do. Now, Noah was given commandments, was given instructions to save himself and his family during the generation that was wicked. And the Bible does inform us that Noah found grace in the presence of God, but he did not find grace in the eyes of men. Remember when God had told him, when you read this chapter six, seven, eight, nine, like I mentioned, he must have gone around asking people, the generation is evil, turn from evil and do good. But the people did not listen to him, instead, People laughed at him. Instead, people ridiculed him. But he remained faithful to God. And therefore, he found favor in the eyes of God. So instead of being influenced by the men and women at that time, he decided to remain obedient to God's word. And he was influenced by God's commandments. And so why I'm reading in this book, because we are people of the book, and we keep writing for future reference. And so this man followed the commandments of God. And our generation, the way it is looking like, we are not any different from law Noah's time. We are not any different from those generations that were evil, wicked, like we read in Genesis chapter six, verse five, that God saw the inclination of every heart, evil all the time. And so no time challenges us. Noah's time challenges us, and we get challenged because it was an evil generation and it remains evil and even during the other time. We have struggles like Noah was. And so I invite you to think through this man, Noah, and think through these scriptures. You take time to read the chapters six, seven, eight, and nine, and you will find the grace in the place of in the eyes of God. So human beings at that time became engulfed in depravity, become engulfed in corruption, became engulfed in ungodliness. By the way, is it any different from what we are now? Corruption all the time, ungodliness everywhere, 
the brevity everywhere and rejection of God. And so people on the outward, on the surface, look like they fear God. Because actually it's during our generation, actually the gospel has been preached so much. But it's during this time that actually the times are so wicked. And so, but God, the moment people rejected God, God also rejected them. And that is when you follow that in Genesis chapter 6. So we have to note the following things about Noah. I have learned so much about it. The reason why I'm sharing with you. Now, point number one about the man Noah is that Noah teaches us that God speaks to human beings. And Noah had the voice of God speak to him in the midst of the noises, the noise that was there, the disturbances that were there, the wickedness that was there. God still spoke to Noah. And so we pick a lesson that actually even during the wicked generation, God can speak to somebody. And because the earth was so wicked, full of violence, God talked to Noah and Noah listened. Noah heard. And so he gave, was given specific instructions, specific instructions to be done, to be followed. And Noah followed every instruction to the letter. Now, since God speaks to human beings, it's evidenced in the biblical, in this figure here. And the biblical narrative gives us you know, examples of men and women that God spoke to. So even during our generation, I pray for you and I pray for myself that God can be able to speak something to us today during this period of wickedness. Point number two, Noah, the man in the Bible that we're talking about now, teaches us that we can never go wrong when we listen to God. Remember, Noah listened to God in all things. And so I encourage us that actually you will never go wrong when you listen to God. And Noah listened to God and he was able to construct the ark, which ark was his salvation. Now, try obedience. Now, Noah did everything as God had instructed him. And this one we see in Genesis 6, 22, he did everything that God had instructed him. Now, knowing what is right and doing what and doing it is the point that we need this generation. No right, do it. And the point that we're talking about is we can never go wrong. So young man, young woman, or whoever you are, the invitation is you'll never go wrong. Follow your, follow obedience, follow the instructions that God gives you. And so ignoring God's instructions comes with penalty. The people at Noah's time ignored God's instructions, ignored God's word, and the penalty was so heavy. And because it was so heavy, remember, the whole earth was wiped out and everything was destroyed because of disobedience. So Noah provides us as a roadmap of obedience, a roadmap of obedience, and you and I need to be obedient, following what God desires us to do. And point number three that I want to put to you, my brother, my sister, is that in chaotic situations, we can still find favor in God. Now, chaos, violence, corruption, rejection, all these things were evident during Noah's time. Now, but Noah, in the midst of all that confusion, in the midst of all that noise, Noah found favor before God. Noah found favor in the eyes of God. So out of chaos that we are in now, the confusion that is now, let's find favor before God. I pray for you and I pray for everyone that still remains faithful, that you'll find favor before God. Noah remained blameless. Noah remained faithful. He is an example to us and to you and to me. Noah walked faithfully before God and with God. He Remember, he walked before God and with God. Now I pray for you. I pray for myself that we shall walk with God and before God. Because less that we drain ourselves. Even when everything before him was grumbling, he remained faithful. And I pray for everyone, and I pray for this generation that there will be men and women who will be standing like Noah and his family. And then point number four is that God keeps his promises. Pray the Lord. When he makes a promise, he never breaks it. Now, Noah built the ark. God had made promises to him. He filled it with animals. The ark was filled with animals, with including his family. But the Bible says that after the, the rain fell 40 days and 40 nights, remember? And the flood was, was all over the earth, and it took 150 days to subside. But remember that actually, even then, 
God remembered the covenant that they had made with him. Noah was up on the waters in the ark, but God remembered the ark. And in Genesis chapter 8, the Bible says that God remembered Noah and everything that was with him in the ark. And we have examples of people that God remembered Noah in the ark. Genesis chapter 19, we talk about Abraham. God remembered him when he was, you know, and you know, all these people. And then um, first Samuel chapter 1, verse 90, God remembered Hannah, the woman who had that was, you know, that was, you know, barren without children. God remembers. And when I talk about God remembering, I can talk and talk and talk and talk. Because actually the Bible is full of remembrances of God. And so God keeps his promises and so remain faithful. And um, in Psalms 105, verse 8, God remembered his people. And indeed he remembers. And so we pray that even during our generation, God remembers us. Now, point number five is plan ahead. And I want to talk to men and women. I want to talk to everyone that actually you find time to listen to this, to check out to this, that we plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah started building the ark. But he needed to plan ahead. When people are doing exams, you need to plan ahead. For marriage, people, you need to plan ahead. Even when you are, your wife or someone is pregnant, you plan ahead by preparing everything else. And everything is about planning ahead. So Noah laid down his plans about the future. And so I just want to encourage us to plan ahead. It's just a simple statement, plan ahead. And if we had the time, we would talk about planning ahead all the time. But I'm saying plan ahead, look ahead. Noah planned ahead. And point number six is that don't listen to critics. Don't be derailed by critics when you know what you are doing. Just get on with your assignments and do them. And those assignments that need to be done. Focus on what you want to achieve in life. And this is the Noah man who was so cautious. The critics were there. The violent people were there. The rejected, the rejected people were there. The corrupt people were there. They made the noise, but he remained focused. And so don't listen to critics when you are doing something good something that glorifies God. I have learned my own lesson and I also encourage you to learn your lesson that actually don't listen to critics when it is God pleasing, when something is God glorifying, stick there. And then point number seven, as I wind up, is that actually build your future on high ground. Remember, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Can I repeat that? The best way to predict the future is to create it. And so, Build your future on high ground. Remember high ground and that actually even when it rains and the, the, whatever else is swallowed up, yours will remain standing. And I want to thank God that for the man Noah, he gives, he leaves us a lot of lessons and one, two more. And if this is another lesson that we pick that for safety, for safety's sake, travel in pairs. You know, he, you have someone that you consult with, have someone that you talk to, have someone that you pray with, have someone that you, you know, that you read with. Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. You know what? When they were taking to, 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 the, to the ark, they went two by two, two by two, two by two, and some other seven. Now here, when you travel alone, you travel fast. Yes. But when you travel with somebody, you travel far. Very, very important. The length of the distance that are going to move. And so alone, you can go very fast, but when you have company, you go far. Not just fast, but you go farther. And so when you are listening to me, you know, feelings of loneliness are killing people. So find somebody to talk to. Find somebody you pray with. Find somebody you share with. And it is important. And so your work finally should include or at least not exclude your family. Now, I just want to encourage everyone, family people, be with your family. Pray with your family. Learn with your family. Encourage one another in your family. Noah entered the ark with his family. Now, let me talk, let me address the parents here. Enter with your family. Let me address the children. Enter with your parents. Let me address the husbands enter with your children, with your family, the wives, with the mothers, the fathers. Let's keep in there. Now, my brothers and sisters, you need to be visionary to see how the world is moving and know where you're going. And so with these very many things that I've said, if there is anything that you need to do, 
learn something from Noah, get back and read chapter 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, and find out something that you want to learn about the man Noah and during his generation. We are living in a very, very bad generation, very, very soiled generation. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verse 40, the Bible says, Peter told the people who were listening to him that save yourselves. You need to put in an effort, my brother. You need to put in my, your effort, my, an effort, my sister, and so that you save yourself from this generation. It is so soiled. And the difficult thing to do is to find the counterfeits are so many. And the corruption is so much. The rejection of God is so much. People pretend on the outside that they love God, that they are preachers of the word, but you need to watch their works, their actions that they are doing contrary to what they say. And so Noah leaves us an example and something that I wanted to share with you. And may God who started this journey find God during this generation, remain faithful. And may God who started this journey with us will continue delivering us into the promised land. And we have so many things that derail us, but remain focused in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you so much.